Hi, I'm Tony, and this is our video about how to clean and lubricate your bike chain. Now, for me, a well-cleaned, a well-lubricated bike chain is a sign of someone who looks after their bike properly. So it's something that I pay quite a bit of attention to. I'm gonna show you the method that I use for doing both jobs, and I hope that it helps you. Got a few bits with us here that we need for the job. First of all, we've got a bike. The chain on this Yamaha MT-07 isn't horrendous, but it's definitely in need of a clean. Also got a paddock stand so that I can get the back wheel on this bike up in the air. I've got a can of chain cleaner, a can of lube, a chain brush. I've got a pair of disposable gloves to keep the gunk off my hands. I've got some sunglasses to keep it out of my eyes. I've got some rags to mop up the mess afterwards as well. So let's get the bike up on the stand and we'll get into step one. So what we're cleaning off here, hopefully this is obvious, is really just the old lube. The thing with chain lube is it's really sticky stuff. It has to be to stick to the chain. The problem with that is other stuff sticks to it. And as you pick up all that detritus on the road, it turns it into a grinding paste, which can prematurely wear the chain. So we just want to clean off all that old lube and we're using this chain cleaner for that. You don't have to use chain cleaner. You could use kerosene, you could use paraffin. I've done that before. I just tend to get a little oil drain can, put a bit of kerosene or paraffin in there and then soak the brush in it and just clean the, the links as we go. But this really is the most convenient way to do it. So what I'm doing here, I'm just cleaning a portion of the chain at one time. So rather than spraying the whole thing and having the cleaner dry out, by the time you get around to that part of the chain, we're cleaning it. I'm just exposing a section of dirty chain down to kind of the bottom of the sprocket run. Just spray the section from the back of this um, chain guard here. So. Put a bit of that on, you don't use so much chain cleaner then. A bit of scrub on the sprockets, sorry, on the chain links around the sprocket. We're getting all three sides with the brush. So it's less scrubbing, you don't have to do it three times. You get all three sides in one scrub. It's not immediately visually rewarding because all the gunk tends to stay on there. So it's the next stage where you really start to see the benefit from it. But we're working around the links, getting all of that grub out of there a bit at a time. So I've done that section now and then just spin the wheel around till the, the bit you've cleaned is under there. And then I'm just gonna spray again on this section to this section. So now I know I've got all the way around the circuit of the chain because you can tell you can, I can start to see the brush marks from where the scrubbing's been going on. The other clue is if you just get to the bit where you think you've cleaned it, this is where you get the real rewarding part. So you spray this off and it should make that chain link here look nice and shiny once you've had a spray on it. So it just gets rid of all of the residue and the gunk that's been left behind. So we know that now. Once I've been round on a complete circle of the chain, like I've just done, what I tend to do is just give the wheel a good spin, spray on another bit of, another coat. So that's that. And then just go around the whole chain, just hold it, spin the wheel through the brush. At the end, just to give yourself that extra lap through and pick up anything you might have missed on that first circuit. Now that's done, the next step is to spray away all the gunk. So you, you could do that with chain cleaner. I know people who do that. They just absolutely douse it until the chain's looking nice and shiny, but they get through chain cleaner really, really quickly. What I tend to use is garden hose if I'm at home, or I've also got a high pressure, one of those pump up garden sprayers that just puts some water through, cleans away any of that residue of gunk so that we can then dry it out and get it ready for lubing. Now my job, my step at this point is just to get a microfiber cloth or any old rag really, try not one that's going to leave bits in your chain, but just on that bottom run there, just roll the chain through and just dry off all of that chain. Try and get as much moisture out of there as you can. Now, be careful not to get fingers and stuff jammed in there. Definitely don't do this with the engine running. Did I need to point that out that you don't want the engine running? Well, I have. Try not to get fingers jammed in the teeth and just roll that through, drying off those links. Try and get as much moisture out as you can, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we've done that, we've got a really grubby rag, which we can actually put to some good use because now will be a really good time to clean the rest of the bike. But before we do that, all the gunk and mank from the chain lube that's flung onto the back wheel and also on the sprocket is gonna be really stubborn to get rid of when you come to clean the bike. So I tend to just use a bit of chain cleaner to spray it on the rag, and use that rag to clean the wheel down. So clean that residue off the rim like that and then the same with the sprocket just give the sprocket a bit of a clean and get rid of as much of the gunk on that surface as you can because it's probably unlikely that bike cleaner is going to get rid of it as well as that chain cleaner 
Okay, so having dried it off, cleaned the wheel, cleaned the sprocket, really that's job done. And still got, I think, at least half a can of this stuff left. I know people who can get through two cans of chain cleaner when they're cleaning one chain. So I think this technique's pretty frugal on that. Got this cloth, which is obviously not much use for anything other than chain cleaning now, but what I'll do with that is give that a wash out in a bucket of soapy water, fairy liquid, something like that, and just set that to one side and I'll have it, to have it there for the next time I clean the chain. The next step in the process for me is just to take this for a really short ride to make sure there's absolutely no water left in the chain, just to get it warmed up. That stage is more of an ideal world stage, really. If you get the opportunity to take it out for a quick spin, just to get it dry, get it warm, brilliant. If you don't, just make sure it's completely dry before you move on to the lubrication stage. So with a modern chain like this one, it's what they call a sealed chain. So really the job of the lube, all it's there for is just to avoid corrosion. So we're protecting it from rust, really. We don't need it to soak down inside anywhere. We just need to make sure we've got a coating on the outer plates. We've got it on the rollers, and then we've got a bit between the chain and the sprockets just to keep everything coated. So let's crack on with that. Give the chain lube a good shake. Fit the straw into the nozzle so that we're getting a good direction. We don't want it to spray everywhere. And then the first place that I always put it is between the sprocket and the chain just here. So just get a good, a good flow from the straw and get in there between the sprocket and the chain. A couple of spins and that should be enough to do that. We just want a light controlled spray now on the outer plates here. Don't want to get loads, so that's coating that. Just give that a couple of rotations. Okay, that's the rollers done, that's the outer plates done. The last stage is just to get a bit of lube on those inner plates. So just spray down here in this join here. And that's that covered. Right, that's this bike's chain cleaned and lubed up. The final step is just to spin the back wheel a few times. This is something that I do just to try and get that lube to work through. And the idea now is that you just leave the bike to stand for a bit. Let that solvent in the chain lube go off uh, hopefully it'll be nice and coated and it will stay in place for your next ride. So that's how I do it. Everyone's different. If you've got your own method, you've got your own system, then please feel free to put it in the comments and I'm sure it'd be really interesting to have a look through, see how everybody does it in their own different way. But in the meantime, I hope that helps you. Thanks for watching.